Welcome back to another episode of The Ben Thomas Show. Today we are going to take a look at my recent Toys R Us purchase. Now I am really excited to show this to you guys because honestly I've been looking at it on my shelf for a week. Work has been crazy this last week. I haven't even been able to take it out of the bag or out of the box. So today I'm going to get it out. I'm going to take a look. I'm going to have some fun with it and, uh, and let's roll. Oh my goodness. This is a way nicer piece than I expected. I'd seen people post about it, I'd seen some pictures online. I wasn't totally convinced, and I'm normally a 1-6 scale collector, so for me, I like some of the figures that are the small scale, but not necessarily the bikes and, and the vehicles. I find often they look like more like toys. When I saw this in person, the paint job on this was crazy. So, of course, I had to pair it with my Batman figure. Now, I'm cheating a little bit. I didn't get the Batman at the Toys R Us. I did pick this guy up at the movie theater when the movie first came out and when I saw it for the first time. But I'd never done an unboxing. I had done an unboxing of the Riddler figure. So if you guys want to check that out, take a look at the links below. But this Batman pairs with this bike, obviously, beautifully. And the one thing that I thought was really cool, which I actually didn't realize, is that this bike comes with a spare hand for this Batman figure specifically. You can see it kind of briefly up there in the right corner, and we'll showcase it a bit better later. But it's meant so that this Batman literally can hang on to the bike, because one of Batman's hands is a flat hand. Notice a little box damage there? Yeah, that was my bad, not the store's bad, which was unfortunate, because, again, I like having pristine boxes. I like the box art on the back of this. It just showcases some of the collectible cards that come with these figures and bike. Uh, there you go. Bat cycle, of course. I kept calling it the bat bike, so it's the bat cycle for all of us that need that positive reference. Again, I'm excited to get this out of the packaging, so let's pull it out, guys. I don't get quite that same whoosha feeling as when I pull out a Hot Toys, but this thing is still really cool, and I like, like I mentioned with the Riddler video, that blue design that it has in the back. I find it really eye-catching. Just showing this, it has nothing on the back, so it's not a display box necessarily. But again, really cool little box art. I like that it says Green Lantern and other references. There's the collectible card, like I mentioned, on the back of the box, as well as that spare hand, which allows you to kind of essentially physically strap Batman to the motorcycle. Like he physically holds onto the handlebars, which is cool. A little note on that, I did have a hard time getting the hands disconnected from the handlebars afterwards, but let's cut the plastic and get this thing actually out of the box so we can have a better look at it. Looking at it through the shiny plastic, I always feel bad because there's almost no way that I can hide my ring light, but <laughs> that's okay. Now, it's got a really nice weight to it. Shauna makes fun of me because everything that I say is good quality, I always say it has a nice weight to it, but that's how I feel. Like, when you pick this up, it's got a, it feels like it's at least a half pound to a pound. I'm not sure of the exact kilograms on it. This is a bit of an issue for me. I don't like that it doesn't stand by itself. I don't like using figure stands. Most of the time, even in my 1.6 collection, I don't use stands. And so, if I'm forced to use a stand, it does break the immersion a little bit. But again, this is a toy. You can see it rolls back and forth. It looks really cool. The tread on the tires looks real, and it does feel like rubber, which is really nice. And I feel like they do a convincing job with the different types of metals and washes on it. So, really impressed there. I want to get the Batman figure back out of the box. Now, I'm cheating again a little bit. I have taken this guy out of the box previously, so that's why you're not going to see me cut the straps on him. But I do want to show, again, that this box matches with the, the Bat Cycle, as well as the Riddler figure, and again comes with that collectible card inside, which is neat. The one thing I don't like about how they've packaged this is that if you want access to that card, you have to rip the back. You have to rip the back. You have to rip it. There's no way that you can just kind of pop it off. Um, you can do it in a way that even though it's ripped, when you lay it back down, it still has kind of the background. But I feel like for the most part, these boxes probably get recycled for most collectors. And this guy, of course, came with that figure stand that you saw, as well as the grappling gun. Now, the grappling gun is weird. I'm going to show that to you guys in a few minutes. But I wanted to show this because I found this to be challenging. The cape is slotted through the plastic at the back. So you actually have to kind of fold it slightly to get it out. 
I was kind of worried I was going to scratch the paintwork on it, but I don't know if there's actually paintwork on this cape. After close inspection, I think it's more just black rubber. So luckily no scraping on the cape, which was lucky. Now getting them under some red light, I think it looks pretty cool. For the sake of the videos, I have to shine brighter lights on them because when I dim my overhead lights, you can't see the guy at all. But that's kind of cool about this figure. When you silhouette him in red, it looks really nice. My only complaint with this figure, just as my initial gut feeling when I pull him out of the box, is I don't love the way that the skin is painted on the face, but I like the way that the cape looks. I know some collectors have been replacing the cape with a, with a cloth cape, which that would probably amp up this figure like crazy, so I may look into doing some mods on him in the future, as well as some paint weathering uh, would be nice, I think, just to kind of amp up his realism. Now, the shoulder pads on this guy do bug me a little bit, but mostly because of how the cape has to lay down in terms of its profile. If you want to get that shoulder pad up under the cape, you have to kind of squeeze it up underneath. Now, my Batman figure also came with a bit of a, a strange issue, his arm was disconnected in the packaging when I pulled him out. So I thought I broke him as I pulled him out of the clamshell, but I didn't. It had just popped out of the socket, but it's a really snug fit. I'm a little bit worried that over time that peg will erode and the arm won't stay in any longer. I do think that the flexibility on this character was better than I expected. He does have kind of that almost split cut boot design. He bends well at the knees, his ankles do pivot. So you can get a pretty dynamic figure stance on him, which I didn't expect. I haven't owned many McFarlane figures, so I didn't know all of the points of articulation really until I started playing with this figure, which was fun. Now I can see why this guy does come with his own figure stand. He does have a bit of a hard time standing by himself. He suffers from the same problem that my other small-scale Batman did from the Adventures Continue line, uh, that animated Batman I had. The cape is just a little on the heavy side because of its thick rubber. Now the hands were interesting on this figure. He only comes with two hands. One is a flat hand and one is this grip holding hand. I don't love the selection of hands. I think only because I'm so used to six scale. And when I saw this accessory, the grapple gun, I noticed that there was a peg on it, which I thought was strange. So I tried to immediately put the peg into the grip holding hand and it didn't look right. It was upside down basically. And so I was confused until I noticed that the flat hand has a peg spot in it. So instead of actually having him hold the grappling hook, you actually peg it into the hand. Now at certain angles, it doesn't look too bad. I'm not going to lie. But at this angle, I think it looks like shit. Honestly, it doesn't look like he's holding it at all. It looks like he's floating it on his hand. Why not have it that you had a slightly better grip hand so you could basically hold that grappling gun? Now, up close on the head sculpt of this figure, I do really like the seam lines on the cowl. I think that looks really accurate, honestly, to the movie. And it looks neat. It makes it look like leather, which is really cool. But of course, the moment I've been waiting for is let's get him paired with the bike. I like what he looks like standing beside the bike. That is nice. But again, I wanted to get this extra hand that comes out of the package with the with the bike and get it on the figure. I do warn you, I did use a hairdryer to warm up the wrist pegs because they are stiff and really tight and I was worried I'd break it. Thriller! <laughs> Definitely a Michael Jackson pose with Batman. But let's get him on the bike. Now, I again, I recommend with this bike that you're careful when you snap the hands around the handlebars. They go on pretty well, but getting them off the handlebars, I bent the handlebars a little bit and I had to kind of bend them back into place. It wasn't a great experience, so be careful there. And I didn't love the pose anyways. He's way too kind of laid out. And without this figure base that comes with the bike, it is impossible to get him to stand up on the bike in this position. This was about the most natural pose that I got with him holding the handlebars. The problem is, is that the head sculpt doesn't look up very well. So it kind of looked like he's looking at the floor. I think if you propped it up on some kind of diorama base like this, that looks pretty cool with him holding the box, uh, with, him, with him holding the handlebars but I don't 
think that like prone or horizontally anyways he looks that great he looks like he's looking at the ground standing beside the bike is a bit of a different story i do like that but i was starting to feel a bit disappointed because i'd wanted to see him riding the bike in my display not necessarily standing beside it i was worried that that was going to take up too much space so again i was starting to feel a little bit disappointed until i started to play with the pose of him on the bike itself and this is what i got and wow am i happy with this it looks so good for me all of a sudden it just like brought it to life again the figure stand on the bike breaks the immersion for me a little bit i'm not gonna lie but on my display now this looks like a statue of batman on the bike and i'm digging it honestly it's really good even the way the cape is draped over the back looks more natural so if you guys are going to pose it, this is a pose with this figure and bike that I definitely recommend. I was able to tilt the bike a little bit in the figure base itself so that it had a bit more of a look. He looks like he's about to kind of step off on like onto the ground beside the bike. But, or you can have it kind of like he's, you know, turning a corner or just being a badass, sitting there waiting for the criminals. But wow, does this look cool. I'm really digging this, especially under the red lighting. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And I would love to see some photos of this figure in your collection if you already have him. Because for me, this pose has actually brought this figure back to life for me. Because again, I was feeling a little initially disappointed when I slotted those hands around the handlebars and he looked like he was looking at the ground. I think this is much more natural. At the end of the day though, I'm really impressed with this figure bike as well as the figure himself. I love the paint applications on here. I love the weight of the bike. I think the figure on the bike in this position really brings it to life and it doesn't to me look like a toy. If I had to rate the bike out of 10, I would give the bike honestly an eight and a half out of 10 only because it has to use a figure base and doesn't have just a cool kickstand. And the figure, I would give him about an eight and a half out of 10 just because of some of his posability around his neck and the cape is a little bit stiff so he doesn't stand well by himself. As well as for the price, I do wish he came with a couple more hands and a slightly better paint job on the face. But again, that's nitpicking. I really like this figure. This has been the McFarlane The Batman figure and the Bat Cycle from McFarlane. And if you guys like this video, please just hit the like button and hit the subscribe button because I do get a lot of viewers that are not subscribers, so that would be awesome. But this is the Ben Thomas Show. Thanks for coming by, guys. Have a great weekend. Catch you on the next one. Thank you.